The zoos use a number of exhibit design techniques in order to break down the barriers between people and animals, giving us a more intimate look into the animals' lives. So let's take a look at some of the ways in which they do this. One of my favorite areas of the zoo when I was a kid was actually the petting zoo. Now these were absolutely chaotic. There was kids running around screaming, goats headbutting each other, headbutting us, and an unending carpet of poo all over the floor. Now jump forward to when I started my keeping career, or even today, there was a lot more on offer in terms of these walkthrough exhibits. Now on the face of it, a walkthrough exhibit like this seems to be a really good idea. If the animal's unlikely to hurt someone, then having people enter the animal space is a really nice way for visitors to get up close to the animals. But of course there is the welfare of the animals to consider. What you'll often notice in these types of walkthroughs is that there'll be a path, making sure that people stay within their own designated zones. Now what this means for the animals is that they have somewhat of a freedom of movement. If they don't want to get involved with people, you'll often see guide rails or ropes, almost setting up like a VIP area for any of the species that live there. Having animals which are being fed by the public can also be potentially difficult. Certain individuals who are perhaps more relaxed around visitors, more willing to approach them, are perhaps getting more than their fair share of food. I myself have worked in a variety of walkthroughs, and in each of those instances, it was important that the keepers were able to monitor the whole group, monitor the visitor numbers, and also keep track of the animals' movements within the exhibit. But in all those situations, the animals involved are of little risk to people. What can zoos do for either larger or more dangerous animals? The traditional use of bars or mesh can prove difficult. You have that physical barrier right in front of your face, and it's very easy to see how you are separated from those animals. Now, because of this, a lot of zoos have started using glass. Glass at various thicknesses can be an incredibly efficient way of building a fence. But large amounts of glass around the entirety of a large enclosure can prove a little bit problematic. Visitors are going to be looking at that animal from every different angle. And that can cause quite a lot of stress for the animals, doesn't offer them the opportunity to remove themselves from the public view. But what can be done is that glass is used in specific viewing areas. First of all, for the animals, they are going to have areas which simply aren't in view to the public. So that's going to offer them, even in an area of the zoo which is incredibly busy, the opportunity to remove themselves for a bit of privacy as and when they choose. And the second thing it does is it allows the zoo to frame the view that the visitors have. So if you imagine a single viewing window, regardless of how many people can fit in that space, there's only a certain angle with which that they can look at the enclosure. You might see some planting, you might see some rocks or some rock work, possibly just a nice landscape. And it seems like through the glass, it's just you and the animal that you're looking at, that can be a lot more intimate. Depending on the species involved, it can also allow you to design the enclosure in such a way where you have certain elements such as pools or resting places directly in front of the visitor's view. Now having those specified viewing areas is a really good way to manage your crowd and allows you to experience the animals in a slightly different way. For smaller species, for example, the benefit of those viewing windows is that it allows people to get down on their level. A very popular animal in zoos right now is, of course, meerkats. But oftentimes what you'll see because of their digging ability and also because of their limited climbing ability is you'll see a sort of waist or chest height fence. And this offers the visitors a very specific view. They'll often be looking down over the top of the meerkats. But by adding a viewing window lower down, it allows visitors to get down basically on their eye line. And this offers a completely different experience. You're able to see not just the animals moving around, but you can really see them using their claws, for example, for digging or possibly grooming or interacting with each other. And having the ability to get down to their level to be able to see certainly gives the visitors that much more of an insight into their lives. For certain species, either towers or walkways or bridges can really help the experience that the visitor is going to have. Take something like a giraffe, for example. If you're looking at them from down below, looking way up sort of at the bottom of their chin, it can be very difficult to see what's going on. 
So having a viewing tower where you're gonna be up at their head level, watching them using that tongue to pull leaves off of branches, that is gonna really help us as visitors to see something a little bit more special and a little bit more up close. And the same is true for arboreal species too, whether it be birds in an aviary that might be perched up in a tree, possibly even primates moving around through the treetops. By bringing the visitors up to that level, it allows us to see certain behaviors that we wouldn't be able to see from down on the ground. Now these techniques that zoos use obviously show us that actually being close to an animal isn't necessarily about being able to physically touch or smell them, but actually it's about being able to be more intimately involved in the behaviors that they're carrying out. Now, ha ha fences are essentially a ditch or a moat in the ground where you're gonna place your fence. Now, when designed carefully, you can use these types of fences along with planting or theming in order to make it almost seamless between the visitors and the animals themselves. Removing any of the hard edges from a concrete moat, say, and allowing the animals to move down into those spaces, but also shielding the public's view of exactly what's going on just beyond where they're standing is incredibly beneficial. Now, you may actually have seen these in use and perhaps not been aware of it or not really realize what's going on. In some cases, it is as simple as a drop away. You can very obviously see a fence there, but on the whole, the animals are gonna stay up in the exhibit. You're gonna stay up on a path this side. So you simply remove that fence from your eye line. Or with a bit of careful planning with planting and standoff barriers, you can actually have the visitor step back just slightly. And possibly just that small barrier in front of you is enough of an illusion to you that you're almost sharing the same place. Once again, offering the opportunity to get that little bit closer to animals. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your favorite zoo exhibit in the comments down below. And to learn more about zoo animals and exhibit design, why not check out one of my other videos right here.